Parshas Truma. So this week's parsha, there is two mitzvahs that are from the 613. The first one is to build a base of Mikdash. Let's read the Pasuk. The Pasuk is in Parak Chafhei. It's right in the beginning of this parsha. Pasuk Ches. Right on the last line of page 444. It says, Asu li mikdash So here goes through all the materials, what, what we should bring. You should bring to Hashem all the different materials of gold and everything. And it says, you should make for me a base of Mikdash. And I will dwell in that base of Mikdash. <coughs> so, and Rashi speaks out, what does it mean? Li, for, for me, for my name, you should make a base of Mikdash. So this is the mitzvah of the, uh, of the week. Okay, now, the, uh, so the Chinuch, right, going right through the mitzvah, so the, just to speak out, the Chinuch was the Rishon, he lived in the times of the Rambam, and he categorized all 613, he wanted to tell you the count. So he counted this as number 95. Right, last week we had a lot of mitzvahs, last week we went through number 73. That was last week. What number is this again? That was to lend out money. This one is 95, according to the Chinuch, on the Chinuch's count. 95 out of... Yes, 95 out of 613. So the Chinuch, when he speaks it out, he speaks out that the mitzvah is to build a bias for Hashem, in the name of Hashem, and there we'll have a place to serve Hashem and bring the karbanos, to bring the sacrifices, and there is the place where we will go to uh, on every yontif, on every holiday. We will w- go up to Hashem, right, to, the, to be Ola Regal. That's also one of the purposes of being Ola Regal. And then he says... Uh, he counts that one at uh, 95 of the 613 mitzvahs? This is, not, this is number 95. Number 95. But that's not a mitzvah that you or I can do, so to speak. I mean, like... Why? It, it, why? Who's there, who could do it? <laughs> well, I mean, it was done. It was done. But that yeah, was destroyed. It was destroyed. So now... And then it was done again. It's right, only been done so twice. That's right. So it could be done a third time. So it's a mitzvah that's kind of hanging over us that we... It's a, yeah, it's an interesting idea. Let me read to you how... Uh, you don't have this inside. I didn't copy this, but I'll read to you how the Chinuch describes the mitzvah. He says, right, it's a place that everyone can gather, right? We also will go there on the uh, regal, we'll all gather there, and the, that's where the, you know, they would read the Torah. As it says, V'asu li mikdash, you shall make for me a base of mikdash. And he says that this includes, you have to make the different kalim, you have to make a menorah, you have to make the mezbeach, you have to make the shulchan, right, the, this is the table where they put the showbreads on, you have to make all that. Then he speaks out the idea of the mitzvah, so let's get down to what Mr. Callan's asking here. Yeah, he speaks a lot about this. Wow, he speaks a lot about this mitzvah. But at the end of the day, the Dinah mitzvah is that before we build a base of Mikdash, right, before we had a base of Mikdash, we used, we used to just bring a carbon wherever we were. But now that we have the base of Mikdash, the only, that's the only place where we could bring a sacrifice. And what we do there, we make all, right, he explains how you make the different parts to the base of Mikdash, the Kodesh, Kodesh Kadashim, different parts to where, where it is. Oh. Okay. And there's different parts how far a Jew could go. And then you have to build all of the Kalim. Yeah. Now, this mitzvah is Noheg, Bizman, in a time when most, the majority of the Jews are in Eretz Yisrael. When we will have a majority in Eretz Yisrael? When is the mitzvah building the Mishkan? That's when the mitzvah will be, will fall upon us. Which means if we're all, we're, we don't really occupy the land, then we don't have the mitzvah. That's, that's the first thing that he's saying. Only, right, because the Gemara says that there were three mitzvahs that we got when we went into Eretz Yisrael. One of them was to appoint a king, one of them was to build the base of Mikdash, and one of them was to wipe away the, the seed of the Amalek. So from here we learn out 
that it means when we come into the land, when we'll be occupying the land, most of the majority of the year. And this mitzvah is not incumbent upon the yachid. It's not on the individual. This is not a mitzvah for every individual. Rather, it is on the tibur. It is a general mitzvah for the whole congregation together to do that that we, uh, when we will have the uh, when, Hashu, when the Mashiach will come so then we will have a general mitzvah then we will have the mitzvah soon then everyone has to participate but it seems like yeah, it's not a, it's an interesting mitzvah that it's a singular it's not a singular it's for everyone everyone men, ladies everyone has this mitzvah yeah so that's an interesting idea okay so that's the uh, the general guidelines yeah, and the Rambam writes this idea also. That's what if you want to see the Rambam uh, counts this also. Okay, now, so we'll have to think a little bit more, but that's the general guidelines. Now the question is, the Rambam also included in this mitzvah, you should also make all the kalim. Included in this mitzvah of the Asu Li Mikdash, that the Pasuk is saying here, it includes all the parts of the Beis Mikdash, which means, you, some people might say, well, there's a new mitzvah, you should make a mitzvah, and you should make the shulchan, right? You should make the table for the shulchan. How many mitzvahs would you count these, all these mitzvahs, all these things? Okay, you should make a menorah, right? We're going to have, soon coming up, you should make a menorah. Is that a separate mitzvah? So the, the Rambam and the Chinuch, the Chinuch says, no, it's one big mitzvah. Included in the Beis HaMikdash, you need to have all the kalim, you need to have all the parts and all the utensils in order to make it one big base of mikdash, one big mitzvah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what therefore the Ramam says, it's all included. It's all included, all in one. Now, if you now the, it's interesting which he describes as the classic utensils that the Ramam says has to be included. Or the Chinuch. The Chinuch says the menorah, the shulchan, the showbread, and the mizbeach, and the altar. This is the, with the chinuch so far. So far it's the chinuch. So he says the altar, and he also he says and the other kalim and the other utensils. Question is now, what about? So we have to know how to build these, which means you have to we have to learn up how to build these. You got to be prepared in case we have to make a base of mikdash. So you have to know how to build it. So we have to. That's why the Rambam is going to speak out exactly how to build it. He even gives you a picture how to make the menorah because. The Rambam. I'll show you the picture he, he brings up because you have to uh, you have to know exactly how we're going to build it. Yeah, here. Here's a picture here on page ah, yeah. uh, 451. Yeah, so the, so the, right, the, that's the picture there. He shows you a picture how the Mizbeach is built. You know, you see the Rambam has a picture of the Mizbeach. And the right, Shulchan. Because this is all necessary, being that this is part of our mitzvah, part of the big mitzvah of building the base of mikdash, you're going to have to also build the parts, which is the menorah, the shulchan, right, the table. You're going to have to know how to do all this. And therefore, the Ramam list, he tells you exactly how to do it. It shows you pictures also. The Ramam also spoke out pictures. Okay, now, based on that, now we have to ask ourselves the following question here. The question is, what about the Aron? The Aron, right, you'll see a picture there. There is, right, there is a picture of the Aron. Yeah, here it is, on page 447. Oh, 447. Now, the question is, is this one of the regular utensils of the base of Mikdash? Right, the Aron was the place that they, that they put in, right, they put in the Ten Commandments inside. They put in the, right, the luchos, right. the luchos, the tablets, they put inside the aron, and then they put the cover on, and the cover, right, the cover put with, with the cheruvim, the angel-like figures on top, and they put that on top, that was the cover. So that, all together, is called the, the aron, right, the, the top actually had a special name, that it was, you see, it's called kaporas. So they put the kaporas, the cover on top, and then that was called the aron. Now, but it's, it had a specific job. The job of the aron was to house the luchos, to be the home for the luchos. So now, the question is: So do we have to know how to make the aron? Do we have to learn up? We got to read these psukim, maybe, right? You have to read up all these psukim to see how to make an aron. Because let's say there won't be an aron. Let's say when the base of mikdash is built, we have to make sure there's an aron there also. 
right? You have to make it. You have to see maybe these took them. You have to make it out of wood. You got to be two amas this way and an ama and a half that way. And you have to be gold on the inside, gold on the outside. What, right? what happened to the lupus? Oh, the question is, what happened to the lupus? Where are they now? Like, that's the first question. The second question that you have to ask, right after you ask what happened to lupus, is um, what happened to the, to the aura? I mean, yeah. It's also a question. Yeah. I thought it was just a line. So far, so good. Okay, stop me if, uh, if you have any questions. Yeah. Okay. Now, so it seems like you would also have to know how to build uh, the Aron. Well, when it says build a base of Mikdash, it's not a base of Mikdash, it doesn't have the Aron. Right, well, it doesn't have a menorah. Well, that, that's, well, that's the question. Where is it? Oh, <laughs> so, now, so now that's a good question. They are parts of the Beit HaMikdash. That we established because that's how they, they, they were able to say that you have to also build the Caleb because that's part. All these utensils are part of the Beit HaMikdash. They're parts. Now, there are certain parts which are part of a mitzvah but they don't hold back. Let's say uh, certain parts of a mitzvah, there may be parts, let's say, to do Chalitza, you know, you bring you an example, with example we have to learn all about Yibo, but there's different mitzvahs, which different parts of it won't hold back the mitzvah. So let's take Yibo, right, there's a din of Yibo that if someone dies and they have, they don't have children, so the wife should marry his brother. That's called evil. Let's say, uh, let's say it, it's not, it doesn't, it's not a good idea. So what happens is they do chalitza. Chalitza is an alternative for Yibam. And in, what, what they do by chalitza is there's two things that they have to do specifically. One is that she spits in the shoe. She spits in the shoe because sort of uh, that such a person who doesn't want to do Yibam, so it's like not such a good thing. He's not really holding the, up the name of his brother. And also they, they call out that this is what they do to a man who doesn't hold up the name of his brother. So it's called a calling out. It's called a kriya. Now that's the order of how they do the, this, this idea of chalitza. Now, let's say they forget to do, she forgets to spit in the shoe. Or let's say they forget to call out this, this calling out. This is what they do to a man who, do, who doesn't hold up the name of his brother. They do this chalitza. Let's say they forget to call out that thing. So those are parts of the mitzvah. But if you don't do those two parts, it still is a good mitzvah. So do you say the same thing with the Aron? Maybe it's parts, parts of the mitzvah, but let's say you don't have an Aron. Maybe it's still based on mikdash. It's just missing a part, a very important part, but it won't mean that, it won't validate the whole base of mikdash. That's the question that the Minchas Chinuch brings up. That's what he asks over here. Oh, beautiful. Jason, excellent. So you just hit the main issue. The main issue is, that what's the whole purpose of the tablets, of, of, the, of the ark? The ark is to hold the tablets. And therefore, Jesus is saying a beautiful point. Let's say we don't have the tablets. If we don't have the tablets, then maybe there's no purpose of building that, of building the Aron. The Aron is only for that, for that purpose. So, therefore, he wants to say, you, you were just uh, intended for what the mental Chinuch says. Mental Chinuch says this idea, by the way. Mental Chinuch says that that is the idea of the whole, the whole purpose of the Aron is to be at home for the Luchos. And therefore, he wants to say that it would come out that, let's say, in the uh, at the end of the now I'm going to tell you exactly what happened to the Luchos, what happened to the Aron. At the end, in the middle of the first, when they had the first base of Mikdash, it was hidden. The Aron was hidden with the Luchos inside. It was hidden. Because no one knows where it is. Nikanaz means <laughs> hidden. It's like the fish of the Tchelis. He was hidden somewhere in the basement. Uh, we don't know where it was. We don't know where. It might not have been in there. Well, it, it originally was in there when they built the first basement. But sometime in the middle, it was hidden. 
Um, it was called by the name of someone Yoshia Hamela. Yoshia. It was uh, one of the kings. Check up the kings. You'll see he was one of the kings, and and uh, in his days it was hidden. And but it was hidden both the Aron with the Lucos. And I'll tell you something. You ready for this one? In this, then the, the first base of Mikdash was destroyed. The first temple was destroyed. Then they built another one at the second temple. In the second temple, they didn't have an Aron. They didn't have an Aron. So they say the Minchas kind of says, you know why they didn't have an Aron? Because they didn't have the Lucos. So they don't have the Lucos. There's no reason to have an Aron. So therefore, that's why it was fine. There's no purpose to have an Aron without a Lucas, right? It's like having a Aron Kodesh if you don't have any Sefer Torah. But what, what happened to them? You said that it got hidden to begin with. Hidden. So they were so hidden. So Certain so things were hidden. You know, the, the Trelas fish, the Chilazon fish that has the blue, produces the blue dye, the Trelas, it was hidden. Medrash says that nowadays we don't know where it is because it was hidden. Which means you can't just like find it because it's a different, pe- it doesn't mean it was lost. It was hidden there and just like we don't know where Moshe was buried, right? So you can't just say, well, you know, I'm going to do research, I'll find where Moshe was buried. The Torah says, no one knows where Moshe was buried. But this is even more. That just says we don't know where Moshe was buried. But the Tcheles, the Chilazon, it was hidden, as well as the Aron was hidden. We, we, no, so uh, it, it seems like not just a, a person we have to do research but it seems like it was from Hashem that it should be hidden. Uh, did the Chilazon, didn't it just become extinct? No, it did not become extinct. So it's alive and hiding somewhere? It's alive and hiding. It's Nignaz. Nignaz means it's hidden. It's in hidden. Yeah. So therefore, Jesus is to the Menchus Chinuch. That's why in the second temple, they didn't have an Aaron. And even when, right, even when it was hidden, they didn't build a new one because there's no reason to build a new one. Right. Ah, you'll ask me, so how is it a good base on Mikdash, the second base on Mikdash? How is it a good temple? The answer is because it's a part of the whole of the big mitzvah. It is a beautiful part. According to some people, not according to everyone. Well, according to everyone, it is an important part, right. but it's not me'akev. Me'akev means it doesn't hold back. Certain things don't hold back, right? Let's say, you know, the, let's say the, the person is going to lane tomorrow, right? They'll bring out the Torah. Let's say he uh, is supposed to lane, <laughs> let's say, till Shani, right? We go till the first Aliyah. That's how much they lane. They divide into three. Let's say he stops early. He doesn't go all the way till Shani. You know? On the third Aliyah, he lanes just three psukim, just three verses. So what's the ruling? It's good. Because you need a minimum of three verses. Three, three, and three. Or three, three, and four. But, uh, but you need a minimum. Ah, you'll ask me, but there are more than ten psukim till Shani, right? You look here, you count up the psukim till Shani, there's sixteen. We're going to lane sixteen psukim tomorrow. But the answer is, it's not, it doesn't hold back. Certain parts of the mitzvah are parts of the mitzvah, but they don't hold back. I'll give you a classic example. Sittis. Sittis and Tchelis. Tchelis is part of the mitzvah of Tzitzis. Ideally, we should have Tchelis on the Tzitzis. That's part of the mitzvah, and it's from the Torah. The Torah says, "Vinasnu al tzitzis and hakana pisil chelus." You're supposed to put chelus on your tzitzis, and that's from the Torah. That's part of the mitzvah of tzitzis. But if you don't have chelus, does that mean I'm not getting mitzvah of tzitzis right now? What? No, it just means it's not as good. It's not, it's not as I'm missing out on a part of tzitzis, but it's a funny idea. But I'm getting a total mitzvah from the Torah of tzitzis, but I'm missing out an idea, a part of the mitzvah called the trelis part. That's a classical example. It's a great example because this is different than you know other cases. If you can't, right, if you'll miss a string, that will, that will invalidate the whole tzitzis. But if you miss the trelis, you you're getting a mitzvah of tzitzis, but you're missing out on a part part of tzitzis, okay. apart from the Torah even, but you're still getting a total mitzvah of tzitzis. So to the, so to the base of Mikdash. You get the mitzvah of building a base of Mikdash, you're missing out on a part of the base of Mikdash. You don't have the arm, but it's still called the base of Mikdash. So, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask, so, if for some some way we found out what Tchilas really was, right. and we still, well, uh, because it's been our custom for all these centuries to just have white and not use the Tchilas, would, would we still be, uh, would we still be, uh, so say you just kept wearing the white tzitzis, even though somebody said, here's the Tchilas, we, we have it now. 
If you, if, 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 but you have to be a hundred percent sure. Like if you knew, let's say uh, Elio and Avi would come and tell you that this is, this is the real fish. This is the chelazim fish. Then we would put it on our tzitzis because we would want to get the other part of the mitzvah. If you would say, but I don't want to, so you would still get a mitzvah of tzitzis. Just you would be missing out on a part. So, so for those people who do wear a little blue, yeah, uh, as part of their tzitzis. Yeah, because I don't know what the reason is. I guess they think that this is what uh, the, the fish is, right? Or whatever, right? Uh, so therefore, they're still doing the full mitzvah, just like you with no blue, but you're still getting the full mitzvah missing right. the part there, even though they're adding a part, right? Uh, right. They're still getting the full. Yes. Why do they? Why Why do people? No, because they. There was a, someone whose name was the Radzina Rebbe. He said that he found the fish. He did a lot of uh, investigation, and he, found, he said that that was the fish, a certain type of, uh, you know, what, was it, what it was, a snail, a fish, and he said that was it, so he told all of his followers that this is it and they should do it. So like the Breslov, Breslov or Hasidim, they put it, they put it on, because they follow him, he was their, their Rebbe. So, uh, yeah. What? They have a, they, no. No, some mitzvahs, some mitzvahs, that's not true. Oh yeah, because if you have a lula, if it's missing something, it's not a lula. Right? You're chilling in your arm and not in your head. Oh, so this is a mishnah. So this is very good. What you're asking is an excellent question. And on this, the mishnah, there's a mishnah in Menachas. The mishnah in Menachas states that certain things hold each, hold each other back. Ma'akiv, certain things hold each other back, certain things don't hold each other back. The techeles doesn't hold back the lava, the blue doesn't hold back the white, and the white doesn't hold back the blue. Right, they're not, they're independent. And the Tzvillin Shorosh and the Tzvillin Shoyad also are independent. Also independent, right? If you can put on your Shel Yad, you, you should really only have your Shel Rosh on when you have your Shel Yad. If they are a little interdependent, but most mitzvahs really is not like this. Most mitzvahs, you need, uh, you know, you need to do the whole mitzvah. So if you're on a desert island, you only have the Rosh. No, but if you have your Rosh, you shouldn't wear it? No, so if you only have one, then you put it on. Right. But if you have both, you first put on the shayad and then the shalosh. Okay. But if, uh, and Philip would be a, 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 another example where you're getting, you're getting, oh, but you're only getting me one. According to, let's say, the Rambam, the Rambam count with Philip has two separate mitzvahs. So if you only put on the road, Rambam or Ramban? I think the Rambam. So according to the Rambam, you'll only be getting one mitzvah on the desert island. So there it's a separate mitzvah. There would be two separate mitzvahs. But most of the time, it's, it, you have to look if it's a whole or a part. So that, that Mishnah goes through different things. So let's say uh, there's a doubt on that, right? That which is why we say Baruch Shein after we say the Brach. So there we're not sure, right? If it's two mitzvahs, so therefore you maybe you can't make two brachas on it. So we say for just to be suspicious for that that view, we say Baruch Shein to us, right? But most of the time. A real mitzvah, like you're saying, to take a lulav and an esrig, if you miss out on the hadassim, then you don't get a mitzvah. Because there you have to take all four species in your hand at once. You know, so if you, uh, you have to look at most of the time, you have to see if it's a part of a whole, or they are all the whole, or the four species is all the whole, so you can't do without any of them, you can't, you can't miss out on any of them. Okay, so that's the first idea about the, uh, about the aroh. And it's very interesting, when you look through the Rambam, you'll see the Rambam, when he states how to make all the different types of utensils, he tells you how to make, like I said, the menorah, he makes a beautiful picture of the menorah, he tells you how to make the Mizbeah, right, you'll see here, right, he shows you here, right, he shows you how to make the, he makes a picture of the Mizbeah, and he shows you different Caleb, here, here's, um, he shows you how to make the base of Mikdash, but I want to ask you something here, so, it's interesting, the Rambam didn't tell you how to make the Aron. You look through the whole Rambam, he's not going to tell you how to make this, this picture of the Aron. So the question is, why did he leave it out? So, right, let's say we need it. Because the truth is, this menorah, right, you see the picture of the menorah, that menorah you have to know how to make. And the proof is what happened in the times of the Chashmonayim. The times when we had Hanukkah, they made a new menorah. They actually built a menorah. It wasn't even made out of gold. They built it, right? The, the, the Gemara says they were very poor then. So they built one, I think it was out of wood. They got a little richer. So they, then they made a better one. They got a, like a, 
no, brass or something, and then they got even richer, then they made out of gold. So you see, you, got, you have to know how to make the, the different utensils, the kale. They, they, they themselves made it. Right. So why did the Rambam not tell me how to make darum? Was he afraid that people would would go ahead and make it without having the luchos and then they'd like make their own fake luchos or something like that? <coughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. That would be a new zero. To think that they might make luchos. I don't know. That, that we, have to, we have to look into. But this is the Rambam's question. Why didn't why, this is the Minchas Chinuch asks this? Why didn't the Rambam say how to make an aro? Right? He shows you how to make a shulchan. He tells you how to make the table. Tells you how to make the menorah. And he says, let's say today we got we get permission. Let's say all the Jews migrate to Eretz Yisrael, and we're we're actually on the land, occupying it with majority of the, all the Jews. Right? We have the majority of all the all of Jews in the whole world living in Israel then we have a, right, that's when the mitzvah kicks in the mitzvah kicks in when all the majority of Jews 51% of Jews are living in Israel then, and then we have the occupancy of Israel then we have a mitzvah to build a base of mikdash is that is that how Mashiach works like, like how does that tie into it when, you know, when Mashiach comes everyone's going to gather into Israel and then that's so when happen, we'll be in Israel when we'll be occupying majority of the Jews then we'll have a mitzvah that will kick in on the general populace to build a base of meat. So I always heard like you know, as soon as Mashiach comes we'll, we'll you know we can build a base of meat dash. But that's what, what it means, what yeah. Your first deed all that the means that everyone will be there yes. at that time. Yeah. So is it possible that because it's just lost and it exists and we, we won't need to ah. you again you did, you did you look this up yeah, before? Yeah, Jason, you can't cheat us and look on the mental skill before I start. <laughs> So you actually do that what the Minchas Chinuch says. So maybe you'll say, <coughs> says Jason and the Minchas Chinuch, that buy the base of Mikdash, you got to know how to build the base of Mikdash. we got to know how to make it with stones. How, how are the stones? Are the stones not allowed to be cut with a certain type of, uh, you know, certain type of blade? You have to know how to build the base of Mikdash because that's going to be what we're doing. But maybe you'll say that the Aron was Nignazu. It was hidden. So we don't need to build the Aron. You know what's going to happen when the base of Mikdash will be built? What will happen? It's, it, will, it will reappear. Same way it was hidden. It's not hidden to remain hidden forever, right? The idea of hidden is maybe it wasn't fit to be around in our gullus, in our exile. Who knows who will get a hold of it? So it was hidden to be hidden away till the time when we'll build up the base of Mikdash. So, therefore, Jason says, beautiful. The Ramam only had to tell me how to make a shofar, he had to tell me how to make a menorah, but he didn't have to tell me how to make an aron because the aron will just, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu will just come and he'll just tell us, look under that mountain, you know, mount whatever, and dig a little bit, and now there you got it. So you don't have to know how to make it. You just go dig it up. That's what the Benchaz Chinuch wants to say. And and they they actually only had one arm. They never made another arm. Like like we said before, in the first base of Mikdash they had it, and then in the middle by King Yoshio it was hidden. So they never made another one. It's only that one arm for all time. So we'll get back that same arm. So therefore, maybe you'll say that's why the Rambam didn't have to tell us how to make an arm. Simple answer. Very beautiful, Jason. Excellent. Double dessert tonight. So, it's interesting what the Chinuch, the Chinuch, he, how he goes and attacks that answer, and he says that, so it comes out that, that the Torah is not going to, is not approaching, like, building the Ark, building the Aron, like, sort of like a miracle, like, we're relying on, on the fact that we're going to find it and it's all a miracle. So he, he goes to such an idea that you look at the Ramban, the Ramban always says that we always have to know practically how to work everything out in the Torah. If you look back in Parshas Noah, when they built the ark, the Teva, so there were so many animals. So you know what the Ramban asks on the story over there? Ramban says, you know how many animals there are? How many types of birds there are? How is it possible that all the animals fit in the Teva? How could they fit in the Teva? The Teva, however big you, you can try to you figure out, it says how big the Teva was, but it wasn't big enough to hold all the animals. So, the Ramban asked a simple shot question. Shot means just simple explanation. How do you explain these, this idea? 
So the so Rabban says, and yeah. you, we don't rely on miracles, right? You have to explain how it actually how it actually works. So based on that, the Mr. Skinner, he starts to uh, attack this idea that Jason's saying, and he himself said, and, and he wants to say that, being that it's a, it's a mitzvah, and you're telling me it's a mitzvah, right? We're counting this as mitzvah number 95. So you're telling me that it's a mitzvah number 95, and you could build it, you could build it, but one part of the mitzvah you can't do. You have to depend on a miracle. Yeah, you're depending on a miracle. This is the mitzvah. It doesn't make sense. It, that's a mitzvah for me to do, but I can't do it. So how's it a mitzvah for me? We do such a thing that they actually more of. That actually should be a, an impetus to actually build it because if, you, if we say don't don't rely on a miracle, it's not necessarily going to be a nace. So we should therefore learn how to build an ark because we don't know. Excellent. Now, if Aaron pops up miraculously, uh, right? But I mean, but we should be trying because to build it. Right. Hey, what is he replying to you? That we should try and build it. It's a mitzvah. Uh, I, I didn't try it the first one. It's Ellie? Yeah. yeah. So what Ellie said earlier, which is, and, and to your point, Rabbi, that it might even motivate the idea of the Zerk. You're, you're building a box. They're going to want to put something inside that box. Something inside that box. You're going to get it desperate. They're going to have to well, what the so the failures there. There. So I don't know if there's such a, such a decree, but there w- w- was no decree about that. But the question is, but is the Cal is saying here that how could the Torah, it's a mitzvah. I mean, there's mitzvah number 95 is to build the race of Mikdush. Included in that big mitzvah is to build the Caleb, build the different utensils in there. One of the Caleb is the Aron. So if one of the Caleb is the Aron, so I can't, it's a mitzvah that I can't do. It's a commandment to do something that I can't do. And with Torah, it doesn't rely on miracles. So this is the Mitzvah Schinnach's question. Who says it's going to be a, a nace? Like maybe, maybe Hashem will make it happen like, you know, in the form of like an archaeological dig or something. I don't know. Okay, fine. It could be. But I'm asking you, so what's your mitzvah? You have a mitzvah. Mitzvah number 95. Okay? So now the... We have most of the majority of the Jews are living in Eretz Yisrael, right? Let's say we'll we'll have majority, right? Like we had in the times of the Megillah, coming up in the Megillah, Achashverosh, right, and his father, and and the king and the king Darius, they gave the Jews permission to build the base of Mikdash. They started to build the base of Mikdash in those times. It didn't continue, but they started. So right now they get the okay. So we're off and running. Can we build the Aaron? Right, part of the mitzvah is to build the Aaron. So what are you going to do? What, let's do the big well, second. The answer is actually right there. Because they did build a second base. They did. And we called it a base of Mikdash. Right. right. And we did, did all of the karbanas there. And we did everything. Right. So obviously, we fulfilled it without an honor. We did fulfill it. So, but, but, but but I spoke out before, that though you fulfilled the big mitzvah, but one part of it we didn't get. Right, right. Like the tzitzis and the trilis. I got the mitzvah tzitzis, I just missed out on one part. So I got the mitzvah based on mikdash, but one part of the base on mikdash right. I was missing out. So, what's, so I want to know, but I want to do the mitzvah. The mitzvah is that number 95 is but to they build. Did, but that's my point. They didn't feel the necessity to build an iron. The question is, so they could fill it, and they didn't feel, I don't know, so qualified they, so this is the problem here. It's not we really have a mitzvah to build a base of mikdash, including the mitzvah to build the arun. Right. But I can't. Right. So, so, so how is it a mitzvah? So just say that it's a in some mitzvah, but it's a mitzvah to The Torah doesn't tell us to rely on miracles. So, so what is my mitzvah to do practically? Just like we have to be practical, how they all fit in the table. It's a, mitzvah, it's a mitzvah kiyemis. If you if you don't have uh, a bird to do shiluach hakan or stuff like that, then it's not shy to do it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it should be the same kind of thing here. Yeah. It, maybe it's it, yeah, of course it's an integral part of the. Based on me, it would be really nice if we had it. But if it's not there at the time, then then it's not. It's not. We don't get the vera for not so doing that. So you're saying you might be. What well, you're saying that if we can't find it, if we can't find it, then we'll be an onus. There will be just. I, I was just an onus means. It was totally out my fault, right? If, if your alarm clock just doesn't go off and you don't come to, to Shachmas, so Hashem won't hold you accountable if it just if something went right wrong. Your alarm clock just died, you know? So or, or even more so. I mean, if, if say you can't, some physiologically, you can't have kids. So you yeah. can't do that. Same thing, uh, same thing, right. So, but the question is, so good, good, excellent. But the question is, so what did Hashem have in mind? Hashem told us to do this mitzvah. 
So he he told us to do to do a mitzvah, but it's it's not possible for us to do. Yeah, What? We've, we've done it once, but we have another mitzvah coming up soon. Well, we've done it already, and it's, it's coming up soon. That, that was sort of like when they build field. the next base of mitzvah, we're going to have a mitzvah to make an aron to have an aron. So we have an aron. Oh, so does that mean that that means we ourselves can't do anything? We have to rely on the miracle. No, we've already completed that aspect of the mitzvah last time, but we have a new mitzvah again. Since you put on tefillin yesterday, but it's not gone. Yeah. You have a new mitzvah today, you have a new mitzvah tomorrow. So when we build a new base mitzvah, we'll have a new mitzvah to make it up. We should build a base mitzvah daily? No. We built one now this After it gets destroyed, we have to build another. If it gets destroyed, you have to rebuild it. Well, you see, that was my first question right at the beginning. It's like a, they built a first base of mitzvah mitzvah with an iron, right? Yes. They had the iron. Yes. So actually, so they, we can say that the Jewish people, we did it. We did it then. We did it full. We did it then, but once it got destroyed, it... Re okay. right. So now we had to rebuild it, which we did, but we don't have an R. It's yeah. not destroyed. But, but we, we, not we destroyed. didn't have an R in once. Like we've been, we've done it already. So, so we got the mitzvah in its completion the first time. Right. right. But the second time we didn't get it in its completion. Right. right. So if anyone would have the R on, they would have been so happy to see the R on. Oh, now it's completed in all its parts. But it was hidden though. Okay. So they weren't able to do it in its completion, but they got the mitzvah. They right. did get the mitzvah in its whole. Right. And we built you know, the third base of Mikdash. If the iron doesn't show, we'll still get the mitzvah. Right. But if we know how to build it, then, or if we find it, that would be the best. No. If we know how to build it, wouldn't be the best. Because it has no luchos. Oh, wait, wait, wait. that's true. But if no. we find it, that would be the best. Well, so then we assume it would have the luchos. Yeah. yeah. And, and let's say we get the luchos, but not the iron. So it's interesting idea that 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 <laughs> we have to build an iron. Because <laughs> I want to tell you the reason why I'm telling you this is because. When Sh when Shaul there was a fight with Goliath. Goliath was you know you heard of Goliath, David and Goliath. So it says there that in the Medrash it says that Shaul Shaul was King Shaul. He grabbed the luchas out of the out of the hands of Goliath. He grabbed the luchas. So the Minchas Chinuch says, where did he put the luchas? Where did he put the tablets? He would have to build an Aaron then. In such a case, you have to look up that measure. The measure says that at one point we had it. At one point, the Pelishtim, the Philistines, they stole their Aaron and they stole the Lucas inside. And we got it back, but at one point when they, we just got back the Lucas. So we would have to build it then. So it, it, you have to look this up. This happened in Navi. So that's the question, and he wants to know another question. Let's say we find the arrow, and the arrow has the arrow has a little split in the side, right? Like a little uh, crack. You can't have any cracks in the arrow. So we have to we have to maybe fix it. We have to make a new arrow. Right? Let's say it's cracked. We're going to have to make a new one, maybe. So we should know how to make it. This is a mental question. Maybe we'll have to know how to, even when we find the old one. So you might say, well, it will, it will be found. It will be, for the answer that they would probably say is that it will be in, intact. Intact, yeah. So this is the idea here this, that we have to think about. Um, goes a little further, goes into the whole idea of making the, the Shem and HaMishcha. There was anointing oil. So what did they do with the anointing oil? It was a special oil, which we're going to have in Parshish Kisisa, that Moshe made a special amount that he put in all the different amounts of oil and all the different incense, and that is forbidden to make it forever. Only Moshe made it, but it was enough for all the time to make the holy different utensils in the Mishkan holy. He poured it on them and that was holy. So the question is, now it's forbidden to make that amount, of, uh, to mix it. So you have to, have to think about that. The Ramam did tell us all the measurements because we have to, could be because the Ramam told us that because we have to know how to be careful not to make that measurement. That's an idea that he deals with here. Okay, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll think about it. But he, he, the Menachem kind of says we don't have any assurance, any promise that, you know, that the, the Aaron will never be uh, will never be broken or lost and the Aaron and the Lucas will always be inside 
he says we, we, that story in, in Navi was where we uh, we had the Lucas, but without the Navi, without the Aaron. So he, that's what the Minchas Chinuch he leaves off with that question that he doesn't understand how the Rambam did not tell us the right amount, and he's saying he doesn't understand. He thinks the Rambam should have told us the exact dimensions how to make the Aaron. So we'll have to think about a little food for thought.